Sweet. So your typical microscope or telescope is usually going to be a combination of mirrors or lenses. So we've got a couple new equations introduced for a combination of lenses. So one of them here is just that the overall magnification is just the magnification of each lens multiplied together. So if you notice, typical microscope you might have used in biology. So it had a couple different settings. You had an eyepiece. So and that eyepiece had a certain magnification associated with it. And then what else did you have that you could rotate oftentimes in a classical microscope? Objective. You had the objective lens. And you might have like a 10x and a 30x and a 40x or something like that. And so if I use like a, you know, let's say a 4x eyepiece and a 10x objective lens, the 4x means four times magnification and the 10x objective would mean a 10x 10 times magnification. What would be the overall magnification in using the microscope on that setting? 40. And it's just simply multiplying the two magnifications together. So nothing crazy here. So if you do have a combination of lenses, those lenses are either going to be in direct contact with each other or they're going to be spaced apart. If they're in direct contact, you can get the overall net focal distance, if you will, the system by simply this equation. Or if there's a space between them, you got a little more complex equation to get that net focal distance. That also has one extra term taking into account how far the distance of separation between them is this value of d. Cool. But they're plug and chug. Nothing crazy here. Cool. Your classic kind of problem dealing with a combination of lenses deals with the latter case here where you've got two lenses separated by a certain amount of space. And what you're going to use is you're going to use the first lens is going to form an image. And that image is then going to be the object for the second lens. Cool. So let's kind of take a look at the overall net result here in question number four. So question number four, I just recreated the picture here. We've got an object that's three centimeters from this first lens. So, and then we've got uh, 12 centimeters and there's another lens. We've got two different focal distances here in this case for both lenses and stuff like that. And the question is for this combination of lenses, what would be the image distance for the eyepiece and what would be the overall magnification? So in this case, we're going to see this lovely object. The light rays are going to pass through this lovely lens. They're going to form an image over here, and that image will be the object for this guy, which will then form an image, if it's real, somewhere over here, and if it's virtual, somewhere over here. So, and we don't know if it's going to be real or virtual at this point yet. So let's kind of work out the math here. So our thin lens equation still rules the day. And so in this case, dealing with our lovely objective lens, the first one the light rays are going to encounter leaving the object. So how far are we from it? Three. And what's its focal distance? Two. Cool. And so in this case, 1 over q is going to equal 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3. What's my common denominator? 6. So this is 3 6 minus 2 6, which is 1 6. So what's q? 6 centimeters. The fact that it's positive means what? It's real. Yeah, it's real. And if it's real, it's also inverted. And so in this case, we're going to form an image somewhere over here. It's going to be inverted, so it'll be down. And we're going to form it right at the halfway point, it turns out, between the lenses. So somewhere over here. Cool. And that image where the light rays really converge right there is going to be the object for the next lens. And so we'll set up the same exact set of equations here. And in this case, how far is the new object relative to? Yeah. So if this image distance was 6 centimeters out of the total distance of 12, then this distance is also going to be, if I can write here, 6 centimeters as well. And that's our new P for the next guy. Six oh, yes I do. It's definitely 6 centimeters, thank you. And what's the focal distance for this new lens, the second lens? Good. And so we'll get 1 over q equals 1 over 8 minus 1 over 6. What's my common denominator? 24. 1 over 8 is the same as 3 over 24. 1 over 6 is the same as 4 over 24. And what's 3 over 24 minus 4 over 24? 
So not just 1 over 24, but negative 1 over 24. And so Q, we find out, equals negative 24 centimeters. What does the fact that it's negative mean? So the f it means that it's going to be virtual, and virtual means it's upright. So if we look then, going through the first lens, were the light rays inverted? Yes. Yes. Going through the second lens, were they inverted again? Yes. Mm, Q being negative means it's that it's virtual, and virtual means it's upright. So it didn't get flipped back over. So they were flipped upside down through the first lens and then stayed upside down through the second lens. But we can kind of see that another way. So let's look at the magnification here. Magnification of the first lens, negative Q over P. So is negative 6 centimeters over 3 centimeters. And so what's the magnification through the first lens? Negative two centimeters, and what does the fact that it's negative mean again? I'm sorry, negative two, not negative two centimeters. What does the fact that it's negative mean again? For magnification, it's inverted. And the fact that it's two, which is bigger than one? Yeah, it's twice as big. The image is twice as big as the original object. And if we go to the magnification for the second lens, so in this case, our Q was negative 24, oh, and I lost my negative sign already, negative 24 centimeters, and our P was? Cool, and what did our magnification come out to in this case? Four, and just positive four, right? Negative times a negative? So then what is the overall magnification of this system of lenses, this combination? So not just 8, but negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. And so the overall magnification is negative 8, which means what? Again, the final image will be inverted relative to the original object. And it'll appear to be 8 times larger than the original. Cool.